Well, the wait is over. This is Nintendo DS. Why? What the fuck? After Nintendo put the final nail in the coffin for the 3DS family, it ended an era of the 3DS and the entire DS family in general. So, in this video, I wanted to talk about the console that started this all. The thing that started this nearly 16 year old console family, the thing that created so many memories, heartbreaks, moments where you just want to throw your DS across the room because you died right before completing a Mario level, and the thing that single handedly made my crappy YouTube channel, well, less crappy I guess. And that thing is, well, the original Nintendo DS. And honestly? It was kinda shit. Now I'm not going to lie, the original Nintendo DS was something that proved to everyone that Nintendo was willing to do literally anything weird or crazy, but they still knew what the hell they were doing. Because, not going to lie, after the release of the Nintendo GameCube, it kinda seemed pretty bleak for Nintendo. Now, don't get me wrong, the Nintendo GameCube was an amazing console. I mean, hell, nearly 20 years later, we're still getting GameCube memes about it, so it had to be amazing, right? Well, due to the massive success of the original PS2, with it selling nearly 155 million units, Compared to the 21-ish million units that the GameCube sold and just the overall meh reception of the GameCube, it just did not seem all that great over at Nintendo. But on the other hand, the thing that honestly was carrying Nintendo through all this and the thing that people actually gave a crap about at Nintendo was, well, the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP. The Game Boy Advance lineup was probably the pinnacle point of the Game Boy family. I mean, being able to play Game Boy Advance games, original Game Boy games, hell, even some original NES and SNES games on the go, that was amazing. Now, granted, I wasn't born when the original Game Boy Advance first came out, but from the few times I actually did use one and from the seven minutes of research I actually did on the Game Boy Advance, I think it's pretty safe to say that the Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP were pretty damn good. So for Nintendo's next handheld console, it was kind of a requirement at that point for it to be something amazing. It had to be something that was purely game changing. It had to be something that proved to everyone that Nintendo wasn't just a company that knew how to make consoles, they knew how to revolutionize them. Then in 2003, Nintendo announced that they were making a brand new game console and it was going to be released the following year. And they also stated that it was going to be something completely different from the Game Boy Advance and the overall Game Boy family. Then in January of 2004, a new console was announced under the codename of Nintendo DS. And while that alone might not seem all that interesting, what was cool about this was that it was rumored that the new console would be having two separate screens, two separate processors, wireless online, backwards compatibility with Game Boy Advance games, and altogether, something completely completely different from the Game Boy. The original Nintendo DS was something that needed to show that Nintendo still knew what the hell they were doing. Even the president Hiroshi Yamanuchi even stated, if the DS succeeds, we rise to heaven, but if it fails, we will sink to hell. So it just had to be something amazing. Then E3 of 2004 happened and well... Well the wait is over. This is Nintendo DS. Later that same year, the Nintendo DS was released on November 21st of 2004 in North America for 150 US dollars, and then it was released in Japan on December 2nd of 2004 for 15,000 Japanese yen. With over nearly 3 million pre-orders in North America and Japan alone, it seemed like the Nintendo DS was an immediate success. And honestly, it was. In its first week of its launch alone, the Nintendo DS sold over nearly 500,000 units. In its first week alone, I guarantee when Nintendo first saw those numbers, I guarantee it went something like this. Oh shit! Huh. By mid-2005, the Nintendo DS sold over nearly 6.5 million units worldwide. The original Nintendo DS was an immediate success. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Two screens, with one of them being a touchscreen, the ability to play actual 3D games. I mean, Super Mario 64 on the go, man. Holy shit! And on top of that, also had wireless multiplayer, backwards compatibility with pretty much the entire Game Boy Advance library, and all this was only an extra $50 from the Game Boy Advance SP, so why wouldn't you get one? But just like any other revolutionary device, it always has some kind of downside of some sorts. Now personally, I never owned the original DS when it first came out, so I don't really know what it's like to own one of these when it first came out. So I'm just going off pure speculation right now, but if I'm going to have to take a guess, 
I'm going to have to assume it was the design of the original DS. Because I mean, like, no offense to Nintendo or like anyone who actually designed this thing, but I mean like, what the hell is this thing? I mean, did this thing come from space or the non-existent year of 20XX? Did Elon Musk go back in time and just told Nintendo, No, you gotta make it look like a pickup truck I'm 100% going to make in. Seventeen years. I just don't. I mean, maybe back in 2004, this design was actually pretty cool and futuristic. And honestly, if my seven-year-old self looked at this, he would probably think, "Oh, cool! This looks like that one thing from Star Trek." Guys, what the hell am I reading here? Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the design of this thing was just not. It was just not good. And also, from the two times I actually did use the original Nintendo DS, I just thought, wow, this is really uncomfortable to use, my god! And other issues that people seemed to have when the DS first launched was that the battery life wasn't great, the screens were mediocre at best, and also, people were also reporting that they were having problems with stuck pixels on the two screens, but honestly, with any game console launch, it will always face some problems of some kind. So overall, the Nintendo DS actually did have a pretty good launch. But while the original Nintendo DS's launch was pretty good overall, people weren't completely convinced that the DS was actually the true successor to the Game Boy. Even Nintendo said that the Nintendo DS was going to be a dirt pillar from Nintendo's lineup and it wasn't going to replace the Game Boy despite it literally having a GBA cartridge slot. So what happened? Well, they proceeded to make a console that truly ended the Game Boy era and began the Nintendo DS era. And that console was, well, you're probably already guessed it, the Nintendo DS Lite. The Nintendo DS Lite basically took everything that was good from the original Nintendo DS, made them better, and then burned all the bad parts. As the name implies, the Nintendo DS Lite was, well, a light version of the original Nintendo DS, having a much more sleek design, a larger stylus, a longer lasting battery, brighter screens. The DS Lite had all the best parts of the original DS, but in a much more appealing package, and also, it was cheaper than the original DS at a price of $130. And really, the only downside was that it had a new proportion proprietary charger, but whatever. The Nintendo DS Lite was really Nintendo's way of showing that the age of the Game Boy is truly coming to an end and that the DS is now the true successor to the Game Boy. I mean, how could it not be? It had basically everything. Better graphics, a better screen, new games, backwards compatibility with old Game Boy Advance games, online support, it had basically everything. There is no way Nintendo could possibly milk the Game Boy any further. Truly are. The new Game Boy Micro, yes, extremely yes. portable. But overall, the Nintendo DS Lite was the main reason why the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance era finally ended. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way or anything, the Game Boy was an amazing console, but due to all the competition that Sony had with their PS2, and just the overall meh launch of the GameCube, yeah, Nintendo just needed to do something. And them being Nintendo, they just had to go above and beyond what everyone expected. And then they proceeded to make something that would have lasted nearly 16 years. But then again, it was 16 years of some pretty good fun. Did I really just end this video saying it was pretty good fun? Yeah, good enough. <laughs>